All right, all right. It's dream time, y'all. It's astral projection time, so check it out, right? So, um, I recently had a dream, and I'm going to start off by saying this dream is primarily focused on lions. And before I get into the dream, I'm going to tell you what lions mean because it may help you get some insight into what's going on in this dream. When you see lions in your dream, it means that it could mean two things. It could mean that you're showing a position of leadership. It could mean that you're like telling people what to do. It's like it's like disciplining children. It's like you telling them the right and the correct way to do things because it's like they don't know no better or they know better, but they'd rather be mischievous or something to that extent. You understand? Um, it states that you're an authoritative figure and that needs to be known now on the flip side of that it could also mean that there are other people in your life that are trying to control you that they are doing things that um positions them to be over you and in some instances you can be um enabling them or should i say not taking the initiative to say yo look pump your brakes and it, it's not happening like that you know what i'm saying like you're not gonna bulldoze or, over me you're not going to tell me what to do that's not happening you know so these lions approaching or appearing can show you or tell you either of those things you know so they can be warnings and what i get from this from lions when you see lions it's more of a prophetic astral no not prophetic excuse me it's symbolic it's a symbolic astral projection because those are the main two types of astral projections symbolic or prophetic when you see lions they're more along the lines of something being symbolic. Okay, you got that covered. I mean, that's the short explanation. I don't want to drag this. Um, so let's get into it. The beginning of my astral projection, I jump in the joint, right? So it's like I start off in the backseat of a car. Now, whenever you're in the backseat of a car in an astral projection, this means that someone's in control. Someone other than you is in control. And guess who that person is? It's the person who's driving the car, right? Very important to understand this. Um, so already I'm in a position that is not the greatest when it comes to me. You know what I mean? So I look at the person who's driving this car. Now there's a person driving a car. There's a woman driving a car. It's an Aries too. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start putting the actual projection um, videos, and I'm gonna start checking the boxes of the playlists of the people what who are in these astral projections or what their signs are too, if I know them. Sometimes I don't know their signs and it came out and I can do about it. But when I do know their signs, I'm going to put it in there, right? So boom, this uh, Aries is driving the car. Now there's somebody in the passenger seat. I can't see who the passenger is on the passenger side. I don't know who it is, but I know I'm in the back seat. Somebody is actually in the back seat with me as well, but I can't see and I can't tell who they are. Um, I'm more along the lines of focus on me and I'm seeing this person who's driving the car because they're frustrated as fuck. Now this car, maybe I'm going to just tell the details of the car too. The car is a, it's like a, it's a boxed car and it reminds me of those old school Hondas. So when I say old school, I mean like early nineties, early nineties Hondas. So, you know, they got like the, the black strip that goes around the side of it and all that and like they like box cars they're smaller you know what i mean um so we're in one of those joints and don't ask me how i know the out the outer perimeter of this car it's just something about dreams sometimes you just know you know so i know what type of car i know what type of vehicle we're in and if it's not an actual honda it's something along the lines of that type of shape or that type of vehicle so boom the car pulls over. The every shorty, she she pulls over. Boom, we pull over. Now we on a block in my old neighborhood. We on um, we're in Staten Island, so we're on Castleton, and we're on Castleton right where the castle is. So there used to be a hospital that was there, St. Vincent, the old hospital, but it burned down. So we're like, at we're parked in front of that, but like a little bit up from where the hospital begins. And the block before that is Zebra Avenue, so it's a cross section, Zebra and Castleton. So I know there's a store on Zebra and Castleton, always. I haven't been there in a little bit, but I'm pretty sure there's a store still there. Whether somebody still, somebody different owns it, whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a store there. So the, the Aries pulls over, she's frustrated. She's just, 
see it all in her face. She's just, you know, shifting again, putting it in park and all that. She's tight. You know what I mean? She's big mad. And I'm just like, I'm acknowledging that the reason that they're mad is because they don't know where they're going. Okay? And I, I figured this out later on. And this has something to do with the dream. Trust me when I tell you, right? So she didn't know where she was going. And that is what angered her. And it kind of... I knew what angered her, but I wasn't adamant about fixing it. You know what I'm saying? Because my theory is I already know where we're going and I'm trying to tell you where we're going. But it's just not registering for whatever reason. Either you want to ignore it or you think you got a better way of getting there. I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? But... I know I know where the way is. We wouldn't even be out here if I didn't know where we was going. We're in my hometown. So you need to relax a little bit. So when she pulled over, I'm like, I look at my seat. I got a plate of food, right? I got a tray of food. But I don't know what the food is because it's closed. So, you know, like the styrofoam trays, it's closed. So now I'm thinking about liquid. I'm thinking about something to drink. And I'm just like, yo, you know what? I'm going to the store back there real quick because I'm going to go grab me a coffee, all right? She like, all right, but she's still big, man. She's still kind of tight, but she like, all right, all right, go, go get your coffee or whatever, right? So I'm preparing myself to get out the car. That part of the dream is over. I don't, nothing else happened there. So the next thing I know, I'm in a park. Now, when you dream of a park, a park represents like a mindset that feels good for being free from problems. Now, people... Piece all of these things together, y'all. Y'all could do it for me, I'm pretty sure. This is like kind of self-explanatory when I tell you what these things mean. Um, it means about enjoying yourself because you, you escaped some difficult things. You know what I'm saying? And you came out on top. These are stressful situations, but you still managed to come out on top. And you don't have to notice the things that you don't like anymore because you weathered the storm. And who cares what you don't like? It's done with, like, cannot stop you in a sort of a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, it cannot stop you. Yeah, that's crazy. But anyway, um, so I'm in this park. Now it's like dusk, I believe that's what it is. It's sunset. So right before the sun goes down, we're in this park. It's more like Central Park. So I know like um Um Usually I would think that we was in Silver Lake Park or Clove Lake Park because of Staten Island, but I got more of Central Park vibes when I was there. I'm going to keep it official. Like, I like there's an area in the park that I know I've been there before. And I'm like, we might have been right there. And um, so I'm coming this way, but it's like a fork in the road, right? So it's like two roads that come into one. Boom. So on this one road, there's like a brick wall that begins. And they got like lamp poles and stuff that goes around. I can't actually see around the whole bend of the corner, but I can see the brick wall beginning and stuff like that. So at this point, I don't know truly what park we're in, right? But nonetheless, here we go. So I'm in this park. I'm walking this way. I could feel like there's people behind me, but there's more people in front of me. So there's about 15 of us total, maybe 18 or 20. But there's more of a group in the crowd in front of me. And they're coming along the other road that's meeting with me on this road to this to this one road, right? And there's trees beyond us. So I see a chick. She a Virgo chick, right? I'm telling y'all. I usually don't say this in dreams, but I'm telling y'all now. I want to make a note of this. It's a Virgo chick. And it's important because I dated this astral projection. It's 825 when I had this astral projection, meaning this to I mean, uh, it's Virgo season. August 25th, is, Vir is it Virgo season? Yeah, that's Virgo season. So I, there's an importance to that of why I'm seeing this chick. I'm connecting the dots right there. Now, she's overdressed for being in the park, right, y'all? She she got on this black dress. Like, shit is hot, too. She thinks she, she fine as fuck, too. I, don't, I ain't gonna shout her name out, but she bad. You know what I'm saying? So she got this, she's got this black dress on. She, it's like one strap over the shoulder. The other one is strapless. She overdressed for the park, though. You understand what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's got like, she got like this gown dress on and it's like a gap up this way and it's just fly. It's just fly. You know what I mean? She got heels on and all that. And she's leading the pack. She got chicks behind her. One of the chicks is like a bestie, I guess. And she's just like, yeah, you can, you can see her like, you know, doing a fucking Dougie or whatever. And I'm just like, all right. But these are my peoples. Like I could tell like all of them is my peoples. And it's like when you go on an event with people to somewhere and 
y'all take different rides and then y'all end up there together and y'all just like oh you know what i mean like like a great adventure or something like that and like but y'all meet up together like y'all told each other a spot to meet up at it was like one of those so we all get there and i'm i'm waving the shorty now i'm like yo what up she's like yo what up da, 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 da. she hype i'm hype i ain't see her in a minute you know what i'm saying so i could have left that out but anyway i'm we both hype you know what i'm saying like we on great terms or shit, whatever the case may be. But in the in the in the earthly realm, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily the truth. You know what I'm saying? There's there's some shit that needs to be discussed. There's some shit that that that's in the air that ain't been worked out. Or whether it's gonna just whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm none the wiser, but it's like that. But in the dream, we hype. Yo, what's going? Ah, right. So I see ya. And I'm looking to him like, damn, she overdressed. Like, she bad. Like, what is she doing like that in the park? But anyway, I hear growling behind me. There's a fucking lion behind me, y'all. There's two lions behind me at that. So I turn around real quick. I see this lions. I'm like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Now, these are like lions without the manes, too. But I'm telling you, they were lions. They weren't tigers. These were fucking lions. Not that there's a huge difference, but there is a difference. Um... So, in my mind, there's no even time to figure out a plan or what I'm... I just take off running. I already know. They're that close to me. Like, they're on my ass. I take off running, right? Now, Shorty, that's in the black dress, she take off running too. And for whatever reason, it seems like she leaving the whole crowd behind. Or maybe they went back that way. But she's running in a direction that I'm running in. And I'm behind her. You understand? And now we got two fucking lions behind us chasing us so in my mind and i don't know if i'm right about this or if i'm wrong about this i don't know you know what i'm saying but in my mind is i'm telling you exactly what i was thinking in the dream i'm like yo i'm gonna latch on the shorty right i'm gonna catch up to her and i'm gonna grab her dress and if i don't know if i was like saying yo I'm going to toss this bitch to the lines or I'm going to grab on a hustle. The lion might jump on her and eat her up and then I can get away or I'm saving her and I'm just grabbing on her for a certain moment in time so that I could separate from her and make them chase me instead of chasing her to save her. I don't really know which one I was thinking, y'all, but both of them was in my mind and I'm telling myself in my mind, I hope I'm not a terrible person for if I'm thinking that they're going to eat her instead of me. But I'm telling y'all, it was no time to stand there and think about it or even ask her. It was just straight action. So we both taking off. And I don't even know how she's running this fucking fast. She's taking off. And I just want to look at her feet like, yo, did you kick them heels off? Or like, how are you even doing this? But I caught up to her. And I latched on the back of her dress like I thought I would. And I could feel the momentum of her speed pulling me forward even quicker. So now we like this. Boom, 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 boom. Now, I'm at, now, I told y'all there's trees in front of us, right? So the lion's right behind us. Like, I could feel this nigga's breath on my back. Like, and so, like I thought, I said, all right, this is the moment in time where I dipped that way. So I dipped right because there's a tree. There's a tree and other trees to the right, and there's tree a tree and other trees to the left. I let go of the back of her dress. I went right, and I jumped up this tree, but it had like a stump, so it wasn't even a full tree. It was like one of those trees to where either it died off or somebody chopped that shit down. So it was about six feet tall, but I was running so fast that I just ran up that shit with no stopping, no nothing. I had to grab on or nothing, pull myself up nothing. I just ran straight up on the top of it, and I stood on the stump like boom. I looked to the left of me, shorty, she did left with the dress. She did left and she climbed up in the tree and was even higher than me, right? Had twigs and she had help, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she climbed up, nonetheless, she climbed up. She was secure. I looked over there, she was secure. She's safe, she's straight. The lions, both of them, come after me. So instead of the lion like jumping up onto the stub where I'm at, the, the first lion goes past me to the tree behind me, climbs up to the top of the tree and is like looking down on me, like drooling and all that shit. And I'm just like, I'm telling myself like, nigga, if you was really like that, why you ain't just climb up to get me on the stump? Like it wasn't even much of an effort, you know what I mean? And then the other lion 
didn't really chase me or chase her. It was just like circling around the back of the perimeter of the tree where I was standing. You know what I'm saying? Huffing and puffing and shit like that. So I'm like, damn, man, this is crazy. But I'm like, yo, at the same time, I got to get the fuck out of here. So I looked at Shorty one last time. She was stuck there. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, I'm getting the fuck out of here, B. So usually I fly in dreams. I don't know if y'all have flying dreams, but when you're flying, that means you're in control. Whenever you're flying in dreams, that means you're control. Now, if you can't control the flying of your dream, that means you got some work to do on yourself because there's something about discipline that you're lacking. But usually when I fly, I crank my foot up. So I know like you pedal on a bike, like you standing up, pedal on a bike. Most of the times in dreams, I'll say about 85% of the times in dreams, I got to do that before I take off. Sometimes I just take straight off like I'm fucking Superman and I love that shit. But 85% of the times, I got to do this kickstart shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I just got to practice more, right? I got to do this kickstart shit in my dream to where I like crank it up a few times and I, I jump, I jump, I jump, and then I start flying. So I did the kickstart shit like twice, boom, and then I took off. But unlike other times, I'd usually be soaring and get to see the sights and all that, be flying over neighborhoods and shit. I just, like Dream of Genie, I just landed on top of this uh this ledge in Park Hills, a neighborhood in, in, in Staten Island. And I, I frequent these projects when I, when I fly and I land on these projects. I don't know why, but I land there again. And I know it. I land on top of Park Hill, but it's something different about this building this time because I land on a ledge that has a balcony. So you know, like those those apartment complexes where they had the balcony where you could step out on your balcony, and they got like either like some type of fort or whatever. You know what I mean? Some type of balcony. But if this one got bars on it, and I'm in Park Hill, and I'm like, Park Hill don't even got that. They got fire escapes, but they don't got this shit that I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So I look, sun is out, broad day now, and I'm like, what the fuck? I look at myself, I got no clothes, I got my boxes on. So I got on when I'm basically, when I'm sleeping in. I got a pair of boxes on, and I got a shirt, like a t-shirt hanging over my shoulder. And I'm like, damn, I'm damn near naked, and I'm fucking on a ledge, like at the top of the building. So it's like one more floor above me, and then it's the roof, right? I'm looking down, I'm like, God damn, I'm way up, you know what I'm saying? And I'm... I'm kind of, I'm kind of leery, like I'm kind of fucking scared, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm on a ledge, ledge, and I'm holding on to these balls, and I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So, I've been in these situations before in astral projections, and I'm just like, yo, I'm at the point where I'm either going to be stuck here all my life, or I'm going to jump, and I'm going to start flying. And I've done this plenty of times where I jumped, and I started flying, like, because I fucking had to, you know? So, I'm telling myself that I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump, I'm going to start flying, I'm going to start flying, I'm getting ready. But then this dark skinned dude, he come out of the door from the apartment behind me. He opened up the door. And he like, yo, what's good? Come in. So I'm like, say less. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck it. I ain't got to do all that. Because usually if I don't fly, I got to like hover and levitate and sneak in somebody's window and like float through their house while they're doing whatever in their houses. And I got to float down the steps. And I've been through this shit plenty of times, right? But this time somebody actually came through a door. And assisted me and said, yo, come on in. So I climb over the balcony, boom, throw my leg over the shit. I go inside the apartment. Now, I go inside the apartment and regular project apartment, you know what I mean? Got, dude got the wall unit in there, got the flat, well, it was almost a flat screen. So, you know, like the right before flat, flat screens really hit. It's like the 55 inch joints, like dude got one of those. So he was on his way, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to put dude down or whatever, whatever. So I go in there, and I see the leather couch, black leather couch, and all that. I'm like, all right, cool. So now that I look at myself, I'm dressed, thank God, right? I got a whole outfit on, sneakers, the whole thing. So I look at the dude, not the dude who let me in, but he, he got another dude that's in there, a white dude. And his name is Chris. Chris got on a, a hat. He got on a... He got on one of those... Uh, when, like like those galaxy shirts like from the lower east side like just a, a basic t-shirt shop so wherever your t-shirt shop is wherever your hood is like he got one of those but the long sleeve version and a pair of jeans just regular degular pair of boots he about in his mid 50s so i look at him and i'm like he extended his hand 
And I'm looking, I send my hand to him too. I'm like, what's good? And I'm like, yo, I'm looking at him like, yo, don't I know you? I know you from somewhere, B. And he's like, what's up? It's Chris. And I'm like, Chris, that's right, that's right. So my memory is backtracking now. I'm like, I do really know Chris, like from somewhere. Now in the, in the earthly realm, I don't know Chris. Like, I, I don't know him. So I don't know if y'all seen my dream or or my video when I say, you know, you meet someone from your dreams that you ain't meet before in the in the, in the earth realm. It's like one of those. Like, I don't know Chris here in this place, but I know Chris in that dream. So he was kind of like, kind of like, it's Chris, nigga. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, Chris, that's right. And I'm like, so my mind is like, where's Chris from? Where's Chris from? So I'm thinking LES. First thing that pop in my mind is LES. I know, I know Chris from LES when boom, 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 boom. And my first intention was like, oh, he a smoker. He a smoker. I know him from pa pa pa. And I might have been wrong there. You know what I'm saying? Thankfully, I ain't voiced that. You know what I mean? I could have been wrong and I'd have been stereotyping, I guess. But I'm really trying to figure out where I know Chris from. Because I'm looking at the furniture and stuff like that. I'm like, nah, he ain't smoking. Because that TV wouldn't be here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah. But even more than that, right after I'm thinking like, damn, I know him from, from, from the lower. He like, yo, so you, you going fishing? When the last time you've been fishing? You going fishing? And I'm like... Nah, I ain't go. I, I I hesitated and I was like, "Yo, there's lions down there, B." I said, "You seen the lions?" He's like, "Yeah, it is lions down there. It's been lions down there for a little minute now." I said, "Word." I said, "Yo, I ain't trying to play you or nothing, Chris, but I ain't really feeling going fishing right now. If you know what I'm saying, um, if the um, if the lions is down there, whatever the case may be." So that's the end of that dream too, right? And before I even get to that, before I get to the next part of the dream, because this part of the dream I left out, it's, a, it's another part of the dream, but it was during the same night, right? Um, but when we was in a park, the group that was with Shorty in a black dress, they was like, that's so-and-so house. It was a celebrity. I'm not going to name a celebrity because I don't be chasing it. I, the cloud chasing should be too, too wild these days. People always say you're chasing it. But it was just, they was like, that's so-and-so house. It was a celebrity house. So when I mentioned the brick wall that, like, go around the bend and go around the corner, their house was over that way. And it was believable because it looked like the front of a, uh, an estate. You know what I mean? How they be, like, when the mansions begin and they got, like, these these brick gates that go around their house or whatever the case may be. It looked like it could be possible. So I just wanted to throw that in there because this next dream that's attached to this one is one that I was sitting in a cafeteria with a, a musician, a rap star as well. Not the same one, but a different one. And um, so we sitting down, we kicking in. And I'm like, yo, it's winter time because the clothes that we got on, I'm fly as fuck too. I, don't, I, got some, I got some shit on, you know, I got that shit on. But son, he got that shit on too, you know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at him like, yo, we was like at like night school. I just knew it was night school for whatever reason. And it's not packed. So that's probably another reason why I say, yeah, that's night school. Because it'd be more people in here if it was regular school. So we in the cafeteria and it's only a few of us in the joint and he's sitting across from me though and he like, I said, yo, that jacket is hard. B, I was like, yo, let me rock that. You know what I'm saying? Let me hold that. Let me borrow that. He's like, all right. Let me borrow it. Boom. So I take it. I take his jacket. I put it on. Boom. I'm like, all right. So one thing leads to another school about to get out. I take the coat off and I give it back to him. Like, I ain't even walk out with it. I take it off. Because I realized I still had it. I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I, I gave him his jacket back. And on the exit part, so I don't know if y'all seen Inception. So it's like when they give you that kick. So it's like sometimes you know when you're coming out of an exit dream. So it was like, that was like my kick moment. So I started hearing the song. I'm unstoppable. I don't know who sing that. You know what I'm saying? But I, that's the song that started playing. And, um. That shit was like stuck in my brain when I woke up or whatever the case may be. All right, boom. So that's the end of the dream. So this is what I conclude. And y'all can get in the comment section. Y'all can let me know what y'all got from this as well. You know what I'm saying? I conclude that um, because of being in the car that somebody else is driving, that someone did think that they had control over me or at least they behave in that type of way to where they think they are the driver. They're the driver of my destiny or whatever the case may be. But it was made evident that they're not clearly because they were frustrated because they didn't have the right directions. They did not know what they was taking me. And when you look at Aries Pisces logic, 
it makes sense because Aries is the one that darts off as the baby is the one that says, yeah, I'm the leader. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it's just like, OK, Aries, when it's time to get when it's time to finish this place or pull up to where we really going, where you at? Where you at? You're not there because you're not an ending sign. You're not a mutable sign. You're not a cadent house. You, you, you just you set stuff off, which is cool. Play your position, but don't act like you running shit over here. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously you're not. Now, this does pertain to my life somewhat. You know what I'm saying? And it comes from me taking the chance and taking risks and interacting with people from different walks of life or whatever the case may be. Dealing with people that I deal with, dealing with people from my past, whatever the case may be. But there will come a time when people say, yo, you should do this or you need to do this, that, and the third. And me being like, yo... Let me go get some coffee. It's me not listening, but also activating my own Aries energy because you know what coffee does. It's a psych stimulant that sets you off to the races. You know what I'm saying? So at the same time, now mind you, right? It's wild because I ain't drink coffee in a little minute. And I've been having major headaches behind that because of the withdrawals. You know what I'm saying? But these are all symbols. Like I said, it's a symbolic dream. So I'm like, I right, you know, pull over, my like, relax, you know what I'm saying? It ain't that big of a deal. We in my hometown, so that's another symbol that says, yo, look, I know where we going. Trust me, just relax, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I needed to get in the driver's seat and tell them to get in the passenger seat or whatever. I don't know, but it they if they weren't jumping the gun, they would have more faith in me saying where we're going or knowing where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? Because I told y'all, my feeling was. I know where we going, chick. Calm down. Like, what we need, GPS or something, like, to make you feel more comfortable? Let me go get a cup of coffee. But I couldn't see the result of that dream. We got shifted into the next one. Now, boom, when we dealing with this Virgo chick, y'all, right? Now, this Virgo chick is another one of them types of individuals who have got control issues. She got control issues. So, she thinks she could tell me things or say things to me and they're going to they just going to pan out that way. They're going to result in what she wants. And I've had to show her on a, on a few occasions, like, you got the wrong one, ma. Like, that's not going to happen. I don't care how fine you is. I don't care how big your tits are. I don't care how you make me feel. I don't care. When it comes to me going against what the fuck I know I'm supposed to be doing, the shit gets shut down. You know, and that's what the lions was for. The lions was there prowling. You know what I'm saying? But on both of us, to show that this Virgo season now again for Pisces under the zodiac wheel for the sun sign horoscope. You know, Virgo is the sign where we're supposed to be building our relationships. We're supposed to be public with them and all that too. We're supposed to be, uh, you know, but also analytical about our relationships and who we choose to partner up with. So now I got my eye on this chick. She's the perfect one to, to, she's a Virgo. She's the perfect one to actually see because it forces me to look at my relationships and how people think that they're supposed to have some type of control over me, you know? And that's why I had to bring it to y'all attention. Like, yo, we was hype when we seen each other, but I got to remember in the earth realm, some things need, some kinks need to be worked out because you think, you could control shit and I'm not having it. And we still haven't had that conversation and to be like, yo, the reason why we ain't talking is because of that. Like you, I don't know. Well, I can pretty much assume how you operate in other relationships before me, but that ain't flying with me, ma. I don't care how fly you is. Like that ain't flying with me. You know what I'm saying? And it's a shame because she, she is a dope chick. You know what I'm saying? It's a shame. But, I still ain't gone. I ain't gone. So that was another reason for me to look. It was symbolic for me to look at that. Like, yo, not that I'm allowing them to be controlling over me because if I was, I would tell y'all, yo, I would be honest and be like, yo, you know what? I let them get the best of me. I let them do this, that, and the third. I'm telling y'all, both of these chicks behave that way. Like, they believed they had the right of way to do stuff like that. They said things that suggested they were the boss and they were leading this and I would do what they would say, but it did not work. You understand what I'm saying? So the Alliance was pretty much telling me, 
that I am, if I'm not the leader, I am a leader at least. You understand what I'm saying? And I ain't even got to trip or worry because if I did, them lions would have gave me the business, B. Like, real talk. Like, I don't even know how I wasn't caught up and ate up. That's how close these lions to, they were to me behind me. So, if they, I feel like if they wanted to, they'd have got me. But that's not what the sim symbology was. That's not what the message was. The message was, yo, nigga, you on the right track. You doing the right thing. These people will not control you. You got leadership skills. Keep going. Because my ass is out. I was keeping going. You know what I'm saying? I flew and all that. I ain't waiting around. I'm out of here. You know? Um, so, to further expand on this, right? Shout out to Taboo Taro. I'm going to add her in the mentions, right? Because we was talking and I was explaining this dream to her. And she was like, you know, I told you about the whole going fishing idea, right? You remember? And I was like, oh, shit. That's right. Because she told me that I'd be a great tarot reader. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that, not for nothing, that might be another thing too, right? Like, yeah, she told me to read tarot. And it's just like, yeah, you pump your brakes too. Because that would be you being a lead, like telling me what the fuck to do. Because I I ain't do it yet, right? You know what I'm saying? So that goes to show, like, I ain't listening to her either. But I did listen to her. You know what I'm saying? I listened to her to the point where, because she ain't say to do, she ain't say to do going fishing as tarot but she did tell me i'd be a good tarot reader and she said um videos that i do from now on should be titled going fishing because i got this thing for pisces women or whatever the case may be to where you know you might as well just call it going fishing and i'm like i heard it but i heard it different in my mind like hmm that is a great term but not necessarily for what she sarcastically says it should be for. I'm like, yo, going fishing is like, you know, going fishing, like they say in the Bible, a fisher of men, like going going on my wisdom journey and picking up the people who take the bait that says, yo, this is the wisdom. Come get this wisdom, you know? And I already started a tarot channel, but I only did like six videos on it because I'm a novice tarot reader. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a tarot reader. I just toy with it. So many people want me to do tarot. And it's just like I've been taking my sweet ass time doing that because I'm in control. Damn it. You know, I'm in control of me. So great suggestions here and there. Maybe, maybe not. You know, but as far as forcing me to do it, I'm not going to do it. But long story shorter, she told she mentioned I'm saying a dream to her. She mentioned, remember the whole going fishing thing that I told you about? And I'm like, oh, shit, that's right. So homeboy, Chris, he like, yo, you going fishing? So this can go either way. This could be looked at either way, right? This could be looked at as Chris is just capitalizing on what Taboo Tarot was saying. And others have said, like, yo, do the whole tarot thing. But he's being significant like you going fishing like i literally just named my tarot channel going fishing and i was like nah the fucking lions is down there so what that tells me is i ain't going fishing i ain't doing tarot because people are like forcing me to do tarot you understand what i'm saying people think they got control over me and i just won't let it be that way now, look, this is not just coming from a place of arrogance or a place of ego, right? I've told y'all before, Saturn is an Aquarius. It has rank and degrees during the transit. It has rank and degrees in my natal chart. So my devotion, 12th house, is an Aquarius. Aquarius rules over astrology. Now, should it have been in Scorpio or in the transit in my eighth house, I would have took that recommendation and did tarot because tarot is a cult practice, right? And astrology could be looked at as a cult practice as well. But when you study astrology, it says it clear cut and concise that eighth house rules over occult practices, but Aquarius rules over astrology period so i'm in that notion i'm following through on the astrology the other stuff will come later you understand what i'm talking about i'm not going to be taken out of my groove doing what i'm doing over here 
because this is has great potential if it has great potential it always will have great potential right so I'm not going to drop what I'm doing over here to jump into that just because people are telling me to you know um, I have leadership skills as well you know and I'm not saying these people mean harm or if they mean well I'm just telling you that I'm me and I'm going to do what I feel that I should be doing you know so this is just another one of them astral projections, y'all. This is a symbolic astral projection. I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope y'all learned something from this. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Because I enjoyed going through it and coming back to decipher it or whatever the case may be. Um, y'all get in the comment section, though, and let me know if y'all think I missed something and something flew over my head. Um, maybe I interpreted it wrong. Am I self-sabotaging? Do y'all think? Do y'all think I'm fearful of starting something new or listening to somebody else think my ego is in a way get in the comment section state all of that shit you know what i'm saying i'm just telling you what i interpreted from it which is important when you do have dreams because you got to understand for you to have the vision it means something to you directly the other players are players that are symbolic or prophetic for other purposes that you have to decipher as the individual who's having the astral projection you know and if you deny that, get in the comment section. I ain't tripping. Let's talk about it. I'm out.